Agriculture is not, for the most part. They are looking at buying re nutrient reduction credits from agriculture, and a system can be set up where farmers must meet a baseline of performance that's pretty high before they're eligible to sell credits, and then the buyer can be required to retire a certain amount of credits, so there is a truly a net gain. It's not just offsetting a load reduction that they were already supposed to do. I think this nutrient credit trading, not this year, not next year, it's still developing. We're doing it some in the Bay Watershed, but I think it could be something that once we get the kinks out of it, could move us forward in terms of providing a revenue source and an impetus for additional implementation on farm. Okay. Oops. There are things we can do at the farm level, and some of these aren't very nice necessarily, but again, I think occasionally, I'm a procrastinator, uh, an avoider. We all need some prodding to go ahead and do things. Creating a high level baseline to enter ecosystem service markets means you're getting a big reduction before they get a payment. Allowing trading between ag sectors, if somebody can go way below and somebody else it would cost a fortune, We've never thought about ag to ag trading, but maybe we need to go there. Getting tough, uh, you have some agricultural production subsidies and direct payments and the like. We have our share that certainly get criticized, uh, perhaps appropriately, but those that can be related to environment, if we could link subsidies, production payments, cost share, any payments to farmers, to participation in continuous improvement programs, to proof that they're doing things to meet local water quality goals, that is a true revenue stream for that producer, and they would indeed follow that. They would not necessarily like the fact that they had to, but it is an important revenue stream. And we're also talking with banks and insurance companies about Farmers that are successfully in our program are actually a lower risk farm in terms of meeting all environmental compliance and particularly the new things that we see coming down the pike in the Chesapeake Bay. Can they get some incentive, a minor point break in interest or some reduced insurance premium because they prove that they are engaged in this? And the banking community in particular is quite, inter the agricultural banking community is quite interested in this because they see the risk in some of the loans that they make to people who are not doing the right thing. Okay, something that I'd spend the other hour and a half talking about, if I could, would be developing viable biomass to bio crude markets, or as Hank calls it, creating a bioeconomy on a broader scale than just this. I got in trouble in the Mississippi River panel over some papers I did on corn ethanol and its uh, unintended consequences, which were substantial. But perennial grasses planted on high phosphorus soils, on vulnerable soils, in riparian areas, they can be harvested for biomass, perhaps not cellulosic ethanol, but more and more we're seeing processes like gasification and pyrolysis that turn them into bio crude oil. They can then go straight into an oil refinery. If a farmer can do that, can plant just parts of their land as buffers, filters, and protect the sensitive areas, sell the top growth, generate carbon credits if they ever get value through the root system it's developing, sell nutrient reduction credits to a trading program, and improve soil productivity. Actually, the long term that you're growing that native prairie grass that you all like so much, uh, then this could be a real important additional revenue source. <coughs> In closing down, I'm not talking about government. So what, what are the roles for government? And, and I do think having someone there to push you along is important. Set the target load and allocate spatially, meaning within the different sub-watersheds and by sector. 
developer endorse the measuring stick, have oversight over the, the protocols and tools that we and others like us will be using, provide uh, incentives to move people along this path uh, once they're enrolled in continuous improvement plans, and encourage, in quotes, participation as one way to avoid permitting or additional regula regulatory activity, which again, in our farm community, is a great concern. Um, regulate us. I said I never thought I'd ask for it, but oversee us to be sure that they're getting what they think they're getting. And then I think the monitoring part is a critical role for that really only government is best suited to do. And I'm talking about not each farm, but small watershed to, to large watershed monitoring. And then I like to call it saber rattling. I'm not sure if that's what you term it here. But saber rat rattling and threatening burdensome regulation, if this approach does not succeed, does get people to move, to move on the program. We all take a little urging along. Sometimes I feel kind of guilty when I put these up. But I need pushing, and I'm not much different than most other people. So in closing, controlling diffuse ag uh, nutrient pollution has proven a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. We've been working on it for 20 years in the Bay, have made limited progress, but that's all. Nowhere near what we need. If we make water quality protection an expectation of the supply chain, we can begin at least to incorporate the cost into the product, and full costing is where we eventually need to get to. Avoidance of direct government regulation motivates farmers to do things. It motivates the supply chain as well. I, once again, feel it requires, I, I don't think we're going to expand government in any country enough to have the independent third party assessors and verifiers from the public sector. So I think there has to be developed an independent third party assessment um, group of organizations that can see this. The last comment is that this is not something that's going to happen next week. This is a 10 to 20 year transition. It's going to require adaptive management, meaning we do it a while and then we improve it and we keep getting better. And it requires monitoring because the science on which our estimates of the impact of best management practices are based is not perfect. So we've got to have enough monitoring that if the farmers genuinely out there doing all the things we're telling them and we're seeing a different signal in the stream, we need to understand why and monitoring is critical to that. But I do think we can use the marketplace premiums, incentives from both public and private sectors to accelerate the rate of implementation of conservation and get people in a continuous improvement mode that maybe will get the level of reduction needed to restore Lake Winnipeg or the Chesapeake Bay. Thank you.